The following filming locations take place in downtown Tampa, Florida. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel and welcome if it's your first time. I am Tampa J and I come to my hometown to track down another filming location. This time a filming location I've been wanting to do for several years, the 1993 family comedy classic starring Burt Reynolds. We're talking about Cop and a Half. This movie starred Norman Golden II, the young boy that plays Devin. It was directed by the Fonz. Hey, yep, Henry Winkler directed this movie. Little Devin Butler just wanted to be a cop. And then one evening, he accidentally, well, kind of intentionally, witnessed a murder. And that is when Detective Nick McKenna of the Tampa Police Department, played by Burt Reynolds, befriended young Devin and became a partner. Little Devin became a cop. This is a very cute movie. Loved it when I was a kid. Remember watching it in the theater. Never thought I would live in Tampa and track down these filming locations. And I'm very excited to present this to you. There's much ahead, my friends. There's so much ahead. And for our first filming location, we come to 2704 Highland Avenue, the former Hillsborough County High School, now DW Waters Career Center, was Devin Butler's elementary school in Cop and a Half. At two minutes, in 33 seconds, we get the opening shot of the movie, which is of the high school. Notice the playground equipment in front with all the kids. This shot helped me determine that the playground used to be right here in front of the former Hillsborough High, Devon's elementary school. And a lot of scenes took place right out here in the front yard. The scene begins on a hot pursuit. Devon, thinking he's a young detective, following the perpetrator across the playground packing a squirt gun chases him right inside this door. Right there to the right of the staircase on that wall is where that Gasparilla sign is hanging. Gasparilla is Tampa's version of Mardi Gras. Happens every January. It's one of the world's largest pirate festivals. Devin standing in front of this doorway in front of the staircase. That door is still over there. That actually goes down to the bottom floor of the school. Devin heads straight down there. Oh, there goes Mad Dog. And there's a staircase on the opposite side. You can make those out right here through the window. The window is heavily tinted, but there's the door on the right. And then over here. Focus, focus, door on the left. And moments later, Devin was caught right here in the doorway by his teacher, which he just squirted him with a squirt gun and he was about to drag him to the principal's office little Norman would have been standing there to the right of the column kind of on the inside his teacher right there as well that happened right here looks like this building served as Hillsborough High from 1911 to 1928 and then Jefferson High from 1939 to 1967 those high schools still exist today Jefferson is out by the airport Hillsborough High is just north here in Seminole Heights. Fast forward about the one hour and 12 minute mark when Devin's school friends team up on the bad guys there, throwing Twinkies at them. And right after that scene, they walk right out this way. Let's not tell anybody about this right right here. Not again. In that gate where those kids, the bullies are hanging. Have you got any was right there. That gate used to be right there. That matches up pretty well right there. Look at that. Cop and a half. Welcome to the Sunrise Market of North Tampa Street and Woodlawn Avenue. This is where Devin and his friend Ray come for a ding dong. A little has changed, but not too much. I'm standing where the camera would have been about the same angle when Devin discovers that the Lincoln Continental is sitting right out front of the Sunrise Market. Notice the awning in the building to the right, the telephone pole, and the one-way sign right down there. Lincoln Continental would have been parked right here. That payphone wasn't there. That was added. The camera angle switches to the other side, and you can make out the roofs of these houses here down the sidewalk, down Woodlawn, right there. And next is about the same camera angle. When Devin and his friend come around the corner, 
to plan out what they're going to do when they realize that those gangsters are still inside the Sunrise Market. They would have been standing right here. Devin's friend takes off that way. Right here up against the corner of the building where the two bullies are standing. That one, I recognize him from Clarissa Explains It All. An old show on Nickelodeon used to watch. There's but. a Tampa Bay Buccaneers t-shirt in the window. That would have been about right there. The windows have changed a lot. Right before he takes a baseball bat to the windshield, look over his shoulder there. The telephone pole in that house. Still there today. Very cool. Oh man, don't do it, don't do it. <laughs> and here come the bad guys to chase the boys off after they pulverize their Lincoln. Oh man, I would have been so bad. That matches up pretty well. That's where the car would have been. Welcome to Glenwood Drive, just north of downtown Tampa. This is where Burt Reynolds detective Nick McKenna enters the movie as Devin and his friend witness the chase go down. Here you can see Devin pulling out of this driveway. Notice the brick here, this house is still the same. Look at that, they would have came right out between there. I don't want to get too close because I think there's someone on that porch. But they would have came this way and they would have stopped somewhere in this vicinity and watched that whole chase go down. Bird is chasing after the perpetrator. Notice the Camaro, the street sign, the road over here to the right, which is Glenwood, and they're about to cross Park Avenue into the rest of the park. The Camaro would have been right there. You can make out this tree in the shot, and definitely the road to the right, and the stop sign out there. Look at that. Matches up really well. Notice this tree. Bingo! I love how everything used in this movie in the background was just flat out Tampa, Hillsborough County license plate. And then the chase begins up the north side of Glenwood. Notice the guys in the middle of the road, that tree again to the right, Burt Reynolds, right behind him in the blue Camaro. The chase scene goes right past this house, and you can make out this house right there in the movie. And then the guy takes off, jumps the fence in between this home and this home. And then a view from Detective McKenna's dashboard you see the bad guy hop this fence in between these two houses. Those two houses right here. The fence would have started flush right here and went this way. Bert gets out of the car, attempts to jump over the fence himself, which would have been right here, just after he stepped in dog poop. It was hilarious. And then he says, I hate to jump. Then he comes back, gets in the Camaro, and hightails it with the car and plows through the fence. I'm paying tribute to the legend right there, the bandit, Burt Reynolds. Very cool to be standing here where he once stood, where he once walked and drove an awesome sports car. Another awesome sports car. He once was the bandit, of course, driving that Trans Am. In this movie, the classic Camaro, but both movies wearing those cowboy boots. Miss you, big guy. 315 West San Carlos Street in South Tampa right off McDill Ave, right behind the Pioneer Cleaners. This apartment complex, the one on the right, upstairs unit, the left upstairs unit, this was Devin Butler's house, Devin Butler's grandma's house, as we know he lived with his grandmother in the movie. And it took me a while to track this one down. There's so many apartment complexes that look similar, and all these streets, around downtown Tampa looks similar as well. But it took me some digging, and it was actually the Pioneer Cleaners that I saw out of the corner of my eye in one of the screenshots that led me here. I was a delivery driver in South Tampa for six years, so just remembering the Pioneer Cleaners in that shot led me here. Almost nothing has changed. The lady sitting on the step reading the paper, notice, the flower pot has changed, but everything else is pretty much the same. And we know right there is Devin's room when he's looking down out the window at his friend Ray's family. They're having dinner inside this apartment and Devin's feeling kind of lonely, but from that scene we know that that was his bedroom. And here's Devin sitting out on the railing. Check it out, that railing. 
hasn't changed. He would have been sitting right there. Devin's grandma, played by actor Ruby D, came out the door right here and was greeted by the nosy neighbor before she went off to work. She worked the night shift. And you can make out this mailbox here in the movie right yeah, behind them. <laughs> so cool to be standing in front of this apartment out of all the filming locations I wanted to match up today I was really excited to come by here and match this one up still in South Tampa the next filming location is the warehouse bar and liquor store and much has changed since 1992 but it is still called the warehouse and both exterior and interior scenes were filmed right here this is about the same camera angle as you see the Camaro come off of Gandhi all those bikers and their bikes would have been right here in front of the building. Give me a milk in a dirty glass. Ladies and gentlemen, I am now inside the warehouse bar and it looks exactly as it did back in 1992. 1993 is when the movie came out, but 1992 is when it happened. And right here is where little Devin sat and had that glass of milk dirty glass milk in this spot and I matched it up because of this right here. Look at that design right behind Bert's head. Actually Bert was about to get blasted with a bottle of beer kind of where he's standing. Little Norman there looking up at him and look kind of where that glass is now. There it is. Focus. There's that design. They would have been standing right here. Now there's a radio there. It's not the same radio and not the same TV. Just been modified. But he would have been standing right there. That radio and the TV are in about the same spot as the ones that were there back in 1992. And then when Bobo tosses Bert beneath Devin's seat, he lands about right here in this vicinity. Notice the brick. Brick's still here today. Make it a milk, Steve in a dirty glass. You wouldn't have that milk, would you? No. <laughs> That'd be cool. And right behind the vintage cigarette machine are pictures from when they were filming Cop and a Half. Look, Henry Winkler. Right there, and I believe in the middle, that might be the owner. And of course, Burt Reynolds. And over here is Burt and Bobo as they're fighting here in the bar. Burt Reynolds was once in this bar. Very cool to match up these filming locations. Very cool to be inside the warehouse. The warehouse. I just thought about something. The Fonz and the Bandit were both inside of that bar. Very cool. Welcome to the northeast corner of Kennedy and Florida Avenue. You're looking at former City Hall, Tampa City Hall, which served as the Tampa Police Department in Cop and a Half. Several things went down in this vicinity right here near this corner. We're about to break it all down. Break it all down. Now the first time you see the exterior of the police station, those officers walk right out the door here. Detective McKenna and Detective Butler exit the police station, walking them behind this wall out to the parking lot. They take the corner right here, and then they head over to McKenna's car, which is parked exactly where this car is, but it was backed in. Here's Bert and Norman leaving the police station around this brick wall. Notice the building right beside them, the old city hall. Look, right there. They would have came right around the corner. Notice the brick, the wall, and the window all still match up pretty well. The camera switches as you see the rest of the police force about to take off for their day. Notice this drain right here in the sidewalk. Detective Butler screams at them. Hey everyone, can I please get your attention? Please be careful out there! And they all chuckle and laugh at the cute little kid. You can make out the traffic signal sign right behind Bert's head there. The camera would have been about right here. You can see the SunTrust building right there in the background. So cool, standing where Bert Reynolds once stood. On the sign used to hang Tampa Police Department, but now it's just a blank wall. And this, this third spot where the Camaro was sitting, Devin was on the other side of the car. Nick was about to get in and that's where he asked for his own badge. 
and his handcuffs. Let's pause the screen so you can make out the Northern Trust building there in the background. Devin's about to get in the car, but look at that. There's the Northern Trust right there. Matches up pretty well as they got in the car and took off and headed right around the corner for their stakeout. Parking spot two, four, one, niner. Did I hear a niner in there? The next scene begins here at 220 Madison Street as Devin takes off after that purse snatcher. But there used to be a building right across from where I'm standing here on Madison Avenue, present day Gaslight Park. Detective McKenna and Butler would have been parked right here in this parking spot. And I matched it up because of this subway that sits right behind me. Burt Reynolds takes off after Devin. Notice the car is parked right in front of the subway. The subway, still a subway. And that awning right here, notice it says 220 in the movie, right there. 220 the address. But you can make out the 220 right there on this awning. Look at that. That wasn't peeling back. You couldn't see it. 220. And that's where those numbers used to hang. That's so cool. So cool this is still a subway. That doesn't happen too often. Bert peels out right there from the subway, comes down and makes a right here on Franklin after Devin and they head down Franklin for about two blocks is a chase scene. That building right there is 220 Madison Avenue where we started. Devin crosses Kennedy Boulevard and heading this way and that is where he chases the man with a purse further down Franklin and right here behind me this little monument this little sculpture can be seen in the movie when that kid Ollie's on the skateboard and then Devin commandeers his vehicle as he says and takes the skateboard but check it out monument right there so cool now there's a traffic jam on Jefferson Street as Devin is about to cross on the skateboard and this is the view from the Camaro notice these two trees to the left and to the right, this is about the same angle as they crossed Jefferson. Well, Devin would have went right there, that semi truck sitting right there. My apologies, I may have said Jefferson Street, it's actually Jackson Street. And Bert and his blue Camaro would have stopped right here just before the traffic jam on Jackson. He got out, ran across the street through the traffic, and then into the Tampa City Center. Uh, the next several moments take place among William Poe Plaza as the chase ends. Now, I've been here several times on this channel. You might remember it, and I've shouted out a couple of these scenes from the movie. And right underneath this awning in front of the Tampa Bay Visitor Center is where Devin takes out those rollerbladers, which the camera angle in this shot would have been about right here. Check it out. Not much has changed. Still the Bank of Tampa. You can make out the Bank of Tampa sign right there in the movie back in 92. And that's right where the rollerbladers went through and Devin ran right through there. So this is one of the funniest parts of the movie right here. It goes down right here. Oh my gosh, look at that. He tackles all of them and runs this way. And that was right there. Now it's changed just a little bit, but this is the same sign that you see right before Devin heads through the grass here and catches up with the guy with a purse and we find out that he was running after his wife because she had left her purse at home. And right there shortly behind is Reynolds catching up to the party and you can make out the awning of the Fort Brook parking garage and there's that sign there and then Reynolds comes up to this tree to catch his breath. Notice Devin's clinging to the man's leg still as the camera angle shows Bert's backside, you can make out the building across the way there, across Whiting. This is about the same camera angle. Notice the tree to the right. Reynolds would have been standing about right where I am. So cool. Franklin and Whiting. And as Bert and Norman are heading back to the car, they pass by the Tampa Visitor Center. Notice the glass here. And that lamp to the right there above the brick. Notice the light in the brick. So cool. 1992, 2021. That's a cool t-shirt. 
I might have to pick that up sometime. Welcome back to the Tampa Theater and welcome if it's your first time at 7-Eleven Franklin Avenue inside this original silent movie palace constructed in 1926. On stage was a scene filmed in Cop and a Half. It was when they were tracking down the Bobos. They got a name of a man named Bobo. Here's the scene that takes place on the stage of the Tampa Theater. Notice you can make out some of the art deco, the lamp, that red lamp you see, I've seen those lamps throughout the Tampa Theater. That was my indicator that it was actually filmed here. I know the theater so well since I've been there so many times, since I've been here, I could make out the stage and the old seats. Those are the old seats before they remodeled the theater a few years back. I wish this place was open. It's been closed since March. It is my absolute favorite place to watch a movie. Spent so many hours or so many movies inside these doors. Can't wait for it to reopen. The Tampa Theater. And a block away from the Tampa Theater, my absolute favorite pizza joint, Eddie and Sam's. Not in the movie, but I'm hungry. I'm gonna grab a slice of pie. Eddie and Sam's pizza made with real authentic Manhattan water. Wait for it, are you ready? There you go. I recommend the lasagna pizza. And the good old pepperoni. Oh man, this is gonna be a great lunch. For our next couple of filming locations, we come to Tampa's most historic neighborhood, Ybor City. At 1902 North 14th Street is where Detective McKenna and his partner Devin encounter the domestic dispute. This is about the best angle I can match up with this building then and now. If you notice, down the sidewalk there, there's a white strip. That wall can be made out today. The brick matches up, but pretty much everything has changed. The fourth window upstairs from the right is the window. Here's the moment where Devin diffuses the situation. It was a cute, hilarious moment. One of the funniest parts of the movie. Bert and Norman walking back to the car just moments before. Bert was sitting there on the sidewalk. Right there in front of this post is exactly where Bert Reynolds was sitting on the sidewalk waiting for little Norman Golden to come greet him. They stood up, or he stood up, and walked back across the street to the Camaro, which was sitting right there. Long before this was an office building, it was a music venue called the Orpheum. My band played many of shows here, and I also attended many music concerts here. Well, hello, Mr. Rooster. For our next location in Ybor City, we come to East 7th Avenue and 19th Street North. On the second story of this apartment building was Detective Nick McKenna's apartment. Unit number two is where Burt Reynolds stayed, and there were several scenes filmed inside that apartment, and I believe he stayed in unit number two. You can see a two on the door when he walks into his apartment. All right, so here is Devin crossing 19th Street. He's holding a box of donuts, and right here is that exact spot today. Notice that all the buildings in the background are the same. And look on the wall there, you see that V? That V is still here today. And we know because of the sign in the movie that this used to be Silver Ring Cuban Sandwiches. Again, Ybor City home of the Cuban sandwich, the original Cuban sandwich. For our next filming location, we come to 1495 Doyle Carlton Drive, right beside the Tampa River Walk. Check out the water taxi coming underneath Interstate 275. This is the northbound lane that we're sitting under, and there's the southbound on the other side. Over there, Blake High School. Along this street, Devin was on a sort of a traffic patrol with that other detective after him and Nick had a falling out, him and Burt Reynolds. Burt Reynolds again above me watching the traffic stop go down. That Dodge Caravan would have been pulled over right here where this UPS truck is about to pull out. The former overpass would have been closer to the road. And once Burt Reynolds saw the Lincoln Continental coming down this way, about to plow over Little Devon. He slid down the overpass, looked just like that. I love the humor here because basically Devon's putting it to his principal and 
throwing his words back at his face saying, if I don't write this ticket, you will never learn your lesson. Notice the hotel to the left and a portion of the bridge over there in between those trees. Burt Reynolds comes down the old overpass and darts across here and saves Devin. Right back in 92, that was just a vacant lot. Now it's a parking lot. And you can make out some of those light poles. They look similar as they did back in 92. Below the Bank of America building at 352 North Tampa Street, you can see the sculpture in the movie. Right here at the Bank of America Plaza, the sculpture was very identifiable. Devin and Burt Reynolds pull up in the Camaro. There it is in the movie. The camera would have been up on a crane to get that level to shoot out to Kennedy Boulevard, how it captured the Camaro. You can tell we're a little too low. Burt's car would have been parked right there. There's the screenshot. Notice it's changed and there's no more parking meters there either. 101 East Kennedy Boulevard is the correct address. Uh, that scared me. It looks like the BB&T building is losing its sign. Just happened to catch it as they're lowering it by a crane, a hoist up there at the top of the building. All right, you see those guys and you see where it's a little lighter there in the center? That's where the BB&T building used to hang. I wonder if they sold it. <laughs> you saw it here. That's crazy. Key for Tampa. Tampa J. I had to park right next to the Jose Gasparilla heading to our next filming location. That's Tampa General across the canal there. It's a big ship. It parties every January. Don't know if that's gonna happen this year though because of the situation. But cool to see the Jose Gasparilla up close. Fun fact, Bayshore Boulevard stretches from downtown all the way to the south of the peninsula of South Tampa, making it the longest consecutive sidewalk in the world. It's over three miles of consecutive sidewalk. Fun fact for you. And for our next filming location, I actually have to climb out on the Platte Street Bridge right there, right there in the middle. What goes down in this scene is they're chasing Bobo on his motorcycle as the drawbridge is going up. Bobo makes it barely. He jumps the bridge and then Bert and Devin get stopped in the Camaro right at the top. They get stuck. You can make out the buildings here as the arm is coming down. This is the same arm. It's been restored. Camera angle would have been like this. Almost exactly. Whoa, this thing's moving. We're right here in the middle of the bridge where the car would have stopped in the movie. It would have been right there in the middle. They would have been at a different angle, of course. But you see these buildings in the background. Actually, it was a little more like that. But very cool to be out here on the Platte Street Bridge. I mean, I've, I've crossed it by car for many years now. I've never actually walked out here. Right here is Platte Street. And this goes all the way down to the Channel Side District underneath the Tampa Bay Convention Center. All right, party boat taxi, tiki time. Going up the Hillsborough River. All kinds of fun stuff you can do on the Hillsborough River. And there comes another bar taxi. They're pedaling. They're pedaling and drinking. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, they do that down here. Tampa. No place like it. The next several filming locations will take place around the port of Tampa and beneath the Leroy Selman Crosstown. Brick City, just south of Ebor. This building that sits on Port of Tampa property behind this fence is owned by International Ship Repair. Sorry for it being so loud, I'm standing right below the Crosstown. But this building was where Devin witnessed the murder and the opening of the movie. I'm right against the perimeter fence. This is as close as we're gonna get. This is where Devin witnessed the murder in Cop and a Half. It's a very awesome looking building, isn't it? Very rustic, overgrown. Much has changed since 1992, but Burt Reynolds would have drove right here down the middle towards us after he had just spotted Bobo once again on the motorcycle. Now behind Bobo is Highway 60 in Ybor City and not much has changed. Notice the buildings in the background. All that is still there. And I parked my car 
kind of at the same spot when Burt Reynolds comes between those two beams there. Camaro Super Sport 1992. Volkswagen Jetta 2021. Sorry for the shadows. The sun is like right above us. This sign behind this fence is all that remains of the old banana docks and that's where a majority of the end of the movie took place including the warehouse where the bad guys were. Long gone. Those warehouses are long gone but if you remember the scenes on the dock with the forklifts and the cargo ships that was filmed right out here somewhere and look there's that building once again in between those silos and the building is where the cops would have pulled in the night of that murder and here's that building once again a little closer I came over here so you can see a better angle of the former banana docks millions upon millions of bananas came from South America to Tampa right here oh look there goes the streetcar again See ya. But yeah, right out there is where Cop and a Half went down, those warehouse port scenes. And at the end of the movie, there's a chase out on McKay Bay, right across from the port of Tampa. And this is where the final scenes go down, right here at the Tampa Shrimp Docks. Check out the shrimp boat. I always wanted to be a shrimp boat cat. <laughs> oh wait, wrong movie. Ladies and gentlemen, right here between Versace Shrimp and superior seafood shrimp. These two yellow buildings, still yellow today, as they were in the movie, but right here is where Burt Reynolds and Devin Norman jumped the boat. Now if you look at the screenshot from the opposite angle from Burt and Norman's view, you notice that the one on the right, our left, has three windows. Those windows match up. And then across the waterway here, there was a walkway right in front of the shrimp boat. You can see that clear as day in the screenshot as well. Now those metal pipes that the boat jumped, I think that was just movie magic. I think they were just placed there for the movie. They were huge, but there's no remnants or remains of their existence here. Looks like the tide's out too. But yeah, so cool that the ending scene took place right here and check out all these cool shrimp boats and in this shot notice the structure across McKay Bay there that's the port of Tampa property that structure still out there can you make it out I'm zoomed all the way in but it's right there that's the only thing I can really make out yeah notice straight away from the pipes is the building they crash into no building today I don't know if that building was just built for the movie because the boat did crash through the building, the second boat that jumped the pipes. And that's when Devin pulled the lever and those fish guts came down on top of him. It was a little, little disgusting scene there at the end. That was pretty much the end of the movie. Wow, what a beautiful spot. Wow, the sun's really gleaming. Ow, ow. Well guys, we're back to where we started, and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed the filming locations for Cop and a Half, give me a thumbs up right down there. Thank you so much. And please feel free to leave any questions or comments in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoy these filming locations, subscribe below, come on back, make sure you hit the notification bell because I have so much planned ahead. There's much ahead. See you next time, guys. I am Tampa J, and this is Tampa, Florida, my home. Bye, y'all. Thanks for watching.